Saveri speaking. Uh, I'm the regional mentor for the DESI 2 project. DESI, which stands for Developing Evaluation and Communication Capacity in Information Society Research. Now, DESI 2 is because we build on our DESI 1 experience, where we learned that both evaluation and communication go hand in hand. And that was particularly important if we wanted to make an impact in using evaluation to influence changes in policy and practice. So DESI 2 is a bit different from DESI 1 since we've added on the communication component. I will be providing mentoring support and capacity building specifically on utilization focused evaluation or UFP. And my colleague Birra Ramila will provide mentorship support in research communication through another series of webinars. And the project teams that are participating in the webinars, all of you who are listening in, will develop evaluation and communication skills and be able to create opportunities to use evaluation to change practice or policy. All of you will also learn about uh, practical issues involved in independent and combining these evaluation and communication methodologies. We are proposing to have uh, three webinars for the USC and about the same for research communication. And after each webinar, we will follow up with individual project teams using Skype as stepping stones to provide support for the tasks outlined in each webinar. We're really excited about using this mix of webinars and Skype to help the teams learn how to practically apply UFP and research communication. So in this first webinar, we will learn what is utilization focused evaluation or UFP, how it is different from other approaches to evaluation. We're also going to learn to identify and engage primary intended users or PIU of the evaluation, as well as identify possible evaluation uses. Readiness for UFP is a very important step and we will understand how projects can assess their readiness to undertake UFP. And finally, we will talk about the follow-up to this webinar, the next steps that project teams will complete before the next webinar on UFP. So this is your first group work assignment for the project team. We recommend that each project team deliberate, deliberate on this question. What were the worst evaluation experiences you have had? Discuss with your team members and review in terms of the role that the context plays. And when I say context, I'm referring to the organization culture, who asked for the evaluation, why were certain aspects of the project selected for evaluation, the timing of the evaluation, or any other constraints that influence the evaluation. Also review the utilization of the findings. Were the findings used? By whom? How? What difference did it make to programming or policy? Next, discuss what roles you played. What was your role and contribution? Were you involved during the process of evaluation, design, implementation, and use? How did it influence the evaluation, if at all? So please do reflect on what lessons you learned from these evaluations and note it down. We will discuss your reflections in our follow-up Skype with each team. We all know that when we evaluate, we systematically collect information about the activities, characteristics, and results of programs in order to make judgments about the project or improve it or further develop it. But UFE, Utilization Focused Evaluation, is unique because it is a decision-making framework for enhancing the utility and actual use of the evaluation. 
In the next slides, we will explore what this means. The three important concepts of UFC are the users of evaluation, the use of evaluation, and what the evaluation focuses on. As you can see, the three rings intersect. You cannot talk about users without understanding how they will use the evaluation. And the use of the evaluation depends on what users decide to focus the evaluation on. The interlocked circles remind us that in UFE, identifying users, uses, and sharpening evaluation focus is an iterative process. A discussion on use will lead you to revise who the users should be, and a discussion on what to evaluate the focus is closely linked to its use and who the users are. Users being the ones to ensure that the evaluations are used and lead to changes in practice and or policy. In one of our DESE One projects, which was a network of partners, we were planning to assess for the USC just one of their partner projects. And the users at that time were the health ministry and the use was educating the health ministry about the benefits of using remote psychosocial counseling for healthcare providers. So they had identified a few people in that health ministry for this. But we soon realized that since the project had had problems getting off the ground, we had to change our plan why certain projects and partners had to had in fact not been able to manage their projects. So you can see that once we changed our evaluation focus, our users and users automatically changed. And the focus then began to be what were the different innovative processes that lent themselves to better management in certain projects and why they were on time and why certain projects didn't make it on time. And the users then changed to the management of that particular network. So let's go on a little bit and understand how UFE is different. It's different because we start discussing about users and use even before we decide what to evaluate or how to collect our data or what analysis we're going to be using. In most evaluations, we think about the users of the evaluation and how they can use it at the end when evaluation reports are ready to be disseminated. And in UFE, users and use are the very first steps in the evaluation process. The UFE approach suggests that evaluations must be judged by whether they were useful and were actually used. Therefore, it's really important that evaluators facilitate the evaluation process and design the evaluation with very careful consideration from beginning to end to ensure use. And so the goal of UFE is very clear. Intended use by intended users. Okay, so what does involving users mean? So when we decide to involve users right from the beginning of the evaluation process, we actually sign up for a collaborative approach between evaluators and users. This means that the evaluators and users who could be policymakers or funders, managers, implementers, or even your target population, whoever you identify as a user, is very important, willing to learn as the evaluation process gradually unfolds. Because the UFC works with users, it's very important to clarify what their role is. What do they expect from the evaluator and the evaluation and understand how they will contrib contribute to the evaluation process? This is possible only if there is time and space for dialogue consciously created between the evaluator and the users. You know, because USC is collaborative, Users and evaluators jointly focus and decide what issues to evaluate 
and both are involved in validating the findings. Users also work with evaluators to jointly interpret findings from the evaluation. No wonder there is joint ownership of the results. So we understand from this discussion that what to evaluate, how to evaluate, and making sense of the findings is not the exclusive domain of the evaluator. And as you can see, the user has a direct and identifiable stake in the evaluation process right from the start. And so the role of the evaluator is also clear. Building the user's interest, supporting a climate of openness, and helping the user understand what evaluation is all about. Okay. So who are these stakeholders that are or need to be involved in the USC? As you list them by name, make sure you indicate their position or who they represent. By doing so, it will be really easy to proceed towards the next step, which is identifying the intended users. You know, we often think of users as those who are interested in the report and its findings. But think carefully. Such persons are really an audience. They are interested, but passive. They are not users. They do not take responsibility regarding what to do with the findings. While we are thinking of primary intended users, you may also consider an organization or network or agency as users. But these are impersonal collections of people. An agency or organization does not use evaluation. People do. So who is a primary intended user? Well, a primary intended user is interested and active, owns the process, and uses the evaluation. We have said that the PIU has a direct stake in the evaluation, has the power to use it. It's always a personal choice. And in USC, we identify the user or users by name, such as a Mr. X or a Ms. Y. So you can see that the selection of the PIUs is a very critical choice because USC gives them decision-making power over the evaluation. Michael Patton, who has talked about and constructed the theoretical um, concepts behind the utilization focused evaluation, has identified a set of characteristics that helps us to choose this primary user. Clearly, the PIU or the primary intended user must be somebody who can use and apply the findings. And Patton profiles the user as one who is interested in the evaluation process, knowledgeable about the organization, project, and context. The PIU must be open to learning about the UFE process. He or she should represent an important interest group because we expect the PIU to use the evaluation. The PIU must have credibility with key stakeholders so that he or she can make things happen. A very important quality of the PIU is that he or she must be teachable and possess some degree of evaluative and critical thinking so that they can be taught about UFP. And finally, the PIU should have the time, commitment, and willingness for ongoing interaction and dialogue throughout the evaluation process, and not just at the beginning and end. So you can see choosing enthusiastic and committed PIUs is really important for the UFP process. In our experience, we know that when we engage primary intended users right from the start of the evaluation process, they too embark on a personal learning journey. And as they become more involved in the process, we see growing confidence and automatic 
application of evaluation findings to program practices. In fact, we've seen evaluations and their use even before the project is officially released. I mentioned earlier about a DETI-1 project. The UFE report had still to be written, but the checklist that was developed as a result of the UFE was automatically being used for funding the next tranche of innovative grants. Because of that continuous dialogue between the evaluator and the user, and the facilitative role of the evaluator, we see a reduced power differential between evaluators and program practitioners. It's clearly visible. The evaluator is not an outsider or an expert, but very much part of the process. Interestingly, in another DESI-1 project, whose core business was software infrastructure and information communication technology, with an add-on, a very small add-on, of small grants for innovative projects. And it was this small grants which was planning to use the UFP. You know, it was such a small add-on to the core business, but interestingly, the UFP evaluation process, which encouraged the dialogue with the decision makers, and in this case, it was the director general and the steering committee, it automatically raised the profile of the evaluation, the profile of the evaluator, as well as the small grants projects. So there are numerous benefits that occur when there is the dialogue between the PIUs and the evaluators. We've also seen a lot of joint and negotiated decision-making and learning as a result of the continued interaction. Both the PIU and the evaluator collaborate and agree on major decisions in the evaluation such as what to evaluate, what tools to use, what sample size, and how to use the evaluation to impact change. So let's start with our second group work exercise. Here, each of the project teams will identify the primary intended users. We've discussed just now about the various qualities of the PIU, and that should be a good starting point for the discussion. So think about all the people who will be interested in the evaluation and will definitely use the findings. As mentioned earlier, be specific and spell out who those individuals are by name. Some of the questions that will guide you in choosing the users have been listed here. Think for a moment, what is the purpose of the evaluation? Why are we doing it? What do we want to learn first? Next, discuss in your group. Who will be the likely users of the evaluation? Think of the persons who can use the findings of the evaluation. This will help you to clarify who the users could be. You know, users can be a single user or a small team of users, depending upon your project and organization. You may need multi-level representation from different types of individuals for decision making. Remember, managing a large number of users requires a lot of support, communication, and regular monitoring. Michael Patton usually recommends a single user, but in our DESI-1 experience, which was predominantly Asian in context, our project teams were more comfortable if they could take along people, so to speak, and wanted more representation in the users. One of the network projects in DETI-1 identified every single network member, about 25 of them, to be primary intended users. But in due course, they realized how difficult it was and reduced it to a very small decision-making committee of users. So coming back to this group work exercise, while choosing a user or users, remind yourself, how will they use the findings and what will be the focus of your evaluation? And remember, make it manageable. Choose your user and users carefully so that you can manage the process well. So we've been talking a lot about use. So let's turn our attention to it. Every decision during this 
evaluation process is driven by the question of use. So use refers to the way real people in the real world apply evaluation findings and experience the evaluation process. When we say real people, we are talking about our PIUs, who now realize that the experience of the evaluation process has introduced them to evaluative thinking and practices. They also realize that they can take ownership and control of the process, identify and shape what they want to learn, and they can think of a menu of interests and purposes to guide the possible use of their findings. The use has a number of ramifications in USC. You know, we evaluate for lots of reasons, and decision makers often want to have evaluations to make decisions about the merit, worth, significance, or value of what they're doing. Such evaluations usually happen at the end of the project cycle to answer questions such as whether or not to continue a program or to expand it or change it in some basic way. In some uh, cases, evaluations are carried out to improve programs. In others, to develop or adapt programs to new emergent conditions or to assess innovations. Some evaluations are simply meant to monitor and evaluate what we are doing. We want to know if our pro program is on track, achieving what was planned. PIUs may also want to be accountable to donors and evaluate if the monies have been spent for the purposes it was given. And so we may even want to evaluate to learn from our experience. So there are many, many reasons and uses for evaluations that we can keep in mind when we are planning to select the use. So here is our next group work. This is our last group work for this webinar. Discuss what will be the uses of the evaluation. Try to think about one or two main purposes for your evaluation. And try to review them in terms of, are they about outcomes? Are they about the process? Are they about how well you communicate? Or are there any other reasons or purposes for your evaluation? In this webinar, we were working on the first three steps of Patton's 12-step UFE process. Before this webinar, we have already um, talked about steps one and two, that's project readiness and evaluator readiness. We, the DESI2 team, have had many email exchanges and Skypes with the project team. You may recall that. And while doing that, we were actually assessing pro project readiness. When we asked you to select an evaluator from your project, we were referring to evaluator readiness. Because the goal of UFE is intended use by primary intended users, we began our discussion in this webinar with identifying users, the third step that's identified in this slide. And because we cannot talk about users without thinking of use, we also discussed a little bit about the possible uses and reasons for doing the evaluation. In the next webinar, we will discuss in greater detail about use and how to focus the evaluation. So for some time, let's just, in the next few slides, talk about what we mean by readiness. In DESI 1, we realized that project depth, uh, readiness is key to doing UFD. And we suggest that you reflect on the questions stated here to help you get started on UFD. Are key people in your organization who want evaluation, are they interested in UFP? You would have realized that the UFP is a collaborative process where the evaluator is the facilitator and the primary intended user deeply involved in the evaluation process. So do consider, is your project ready to spend time and resources on UFP? Identifying the PRU is key. And this must be done through serious debate and discussion that leads to a decision on who the PRU is. 
So is the project ready to assess and identify from the many stakeholders who will be the primary intended users? How ready is the evaluator? This takes us to the next slide. The UFE evaluator, as you have probably understood, plays a very unique role unlike other approaches to evaluation. The UFE evaluator is responsible for facilitating and leading the design, the implementation, and the utilization of the evaluation. And because the evaluator facilitates the selection of the user, the use, the purpose, overall design, the evaluator, in fact, has multiple tasks, which include an understanding of the organization development, how to educate about evaluation and utilization, to be a coach and mentor to user, as well as to plan strategically when and how to involve PIUs to help them make those critical decisions regarding use and focus, which are so central to the UFE. Your UFE mentor, that's me, what's my role? Well, I will be coaching and guiding you through the UFE process. The UFE steps look quite simple, but they are radical in how we think and how we do our evaluation. So I, as a UFC mentor, will help to clarify your doubts and discuss possible options, strategies to do the UFC. All along, I will help you as a mentor to encourage reflection and learning as we move through the various steps. And I'm going to be a learner as well, open to debate and suggestions. So we believe in UFE that everybody learns. We are going to end today's webinar with a few follow-up tasks for you. There are three group work sessions that we urge you to complete. Please note down the discussions you have because we are going to refer to them during our Skype or email discussions. The first group work encourages you to learn from your worst evaluation. The next group work will help you identify primary intended users. Once you've done so, Move to the next task of helping these users identify two or three evaluation uses. Please also confirm your readiness, both the projects and the evaluators. As mentioned, we've already started the readiness journey with you, and we encourage you to do so now in your own organization. I'm really looking forward to learning about your experiences in doing these tasks. So please feel free to email me with any questions you have. We can also schedule Skype sessions to help you get through these tasks. We understand that each of the project teams will progress according to their own pace. And so for these uh, reasons, we are planning to have Skype separately with the designated evaluator of each project. So let me end by saying that we are really happy and excited with your interest and commitment to learning about UFE. So here's some useful information, as well as contact details and some references that you may want to look at. I'm going to be ending this uh, webinar. Till next time, thank you very much for listening in.